Hey everybody, it's Susan Poisner from OrchardPeople.com and in today's videos we will talk about how you choose a really great pruning tool and how to care for it. So we are going to talk about that in just a minute. So I mentioned to you that we're going to explore pruning tools in this little video. And in the video, I'm going to go back and I'll show you some clips from an interview I did with Ben Cullen many years ago. So Ben Cullen is a garden writer and quite the expert on pruning tools. So I chatted with him at the Reality Radio 101 studio at the beginning of one of my podcasts. And I asked him why it's important to choose the right tools. Tools are important it's important that you choose the right one mm -hmm. and it's important that you take care of it properly. So what I want to ask you, Ben, is what is the worst that can happen if you choose the wrong tool or if you don't keep it sharp and clean and stuff like that? Uh, well, there's two ways of looking at it. The worst that can happen is you're out a few bucks because you didn't get the right thing in the first place and you're going to go out to buy something new. But worse, you can damage your plants, right? And that's what we really want to avoid. If it doesn't hold an edge, if it's not been maintained and it's not cutting clean, that, uh, that cut's not going to heal over properly and you're going to invite all sorts of disease and you're really not doing your plants any favors um, by running poor equipment. So uh, that is the absolute worst thing that can happen. So the first tool that Ben and I talk about is a hand pruner and you'll be using it all the time when you prune your fruit trees, especially young fruit trees. So I asked Ben to talk to me about the different types of hand pruners available on the market today and how you choose the right one. Okay, well, let's start with bypass versus um, anvil, okay? So a lot of people um, still have an anvil pruner, an anvil hand pruner somewhere in their shed. And uh, it's funny, I've looked at the best independent garden centers recently, very few of them in their selection anymore. It used to be 50-50, now virtually none. And it's because the anvil hand pruner is not that useful. <laughs> well, why Why not? What is it designed for and how, how is it different from this? So it's functionally different. Okay, well, I'll explain the functional difference. So I have in my hand, for the people on Facebook Live, I have a bypass pruner in my hand, which is sort of what comes to mind when you picture a hand pruner. And that's, uh, you've got one sharp blade and then you've got a flat blade that's sort of shaped like a hook and the sharp blade shears past, more like a scissor. Um, it shears along the flat side, the flat hook blade, if you will, and uh, it, it bypasses it, hence the name. Uh -huh, I always wondered why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why it's called a bypass pruner. It bypasses that blunt blade. Whereas an anvil pruner, and I don't even have a hand, hand one here, but I, I have a, an anvil lopper. I'll just grab that quickly. <laughs> He'll be back in a moment. Yep. Um, Let's see what you've got. So there. this is a ratcheting anvil lopper, and you can see uh, that the sharp blade, the cutting blade, comes down on a flat surface, almost like a knife on a cutting board, and it 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 works well for something like dead wood, but it doesn't work very well with green wood, which is why um, a hand pruner you're mostly cutting green wood because it's young. Um, so I've shoots or whatever that you're cutting. Um, whereas dead wood, you're not cutting. You shouldn't be cutting with a hand pruner. And um, what else is wrong with it? It'll crush the wood if the cutting blade isn't sharp enough. Wow. Very common problem. It crushes the okay. wood. And the other thing is a bypass pruner gets up nice and close to where you're cutting. So it doesn't leave um, a long sort of stem sticking out, yes. which allows it to heal over really well. Whereas the anvil has kind of got a gap on both sides of that blunt cutting surface, which means it's really hard to get close. Now, there are different types of pruning tools and they're made of different materials. And we also talked about that in the radio show and podcast. It's high carbon holds its, holds its edge and under ordinary circumstances will never break. But it holds its edge much better because it has a higher carbon content in, um, in the alloy. Uh, some are, are coated with different things. Some of them are titanium coated. Um, some of them are stainless steel, which prevents rust, which is really, really good. But that's what you're looking for in the blade is something that's going to hold an edge. And then in the handle, um, there's some sort of traditional styles like this one, which I have in my hand. It's all steel the whole way down. Um, it looks has sort of a classic look to it. Yes. It gets quite heavy in the hand. Right. And it's amazing sort of the repetitive motion and holding your arm out extended 
how that will really, uh, over time, you'll start to feel the fatigue of that. Ben mentioned earlier that some pruners have steel or heavy handles that make them hard to use for hours and hours on end. His favorite, he said, are the ones with aluminum handles. They're also very sturdy, but they're a little bit uh, more lightweight. And of course, today there's a huge range of tools that you can get with plastic handles, and they will be lightweight and easy to use. But the thing is, there is such a wide array of brands out there, and how do you know what to choose? So I got a little advice from Ben in the radio show. We can start at the top. The Felco 2 yes. is sort of the granddaddy. Okay. Right. So this is this this is about $90, made in Switzerland. Aha. Uh-huh. Uh, what's so great about it? You can take it apart and clean it very easily. Mm. So it comes with um, this key. Oh. Yep. So this key allows you basically to we can Let's show them. So this Yeah. You can see you can see the black mechanism there. Yes. Um it's got a uh, like a ratchet on it. Oh, goodness. And uh, this allows you to adjust the tension on that, so how easily it opens and closes. And um, it also allows you to take it apart. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So taking it apart makes it easy to clean, makes it easy to sharpen. Exactly. And Felco, they expect that you're going to use this tool so much that even though it's top quality, Swiss made, blah, 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 um, they expect you're going to use it so much you can even buy a replacement blade for it. Wow. So this one I'm holding in my hands is about 90 Canadian dollars, which is a lot of money. Yeah. That's a lot of money. So Felco is sort of like the creme de la creme, and they have an outstanding uh, reputation. And then uh, one that's sort of nipping at their heels is uh, it's Okatsume. Okay. Oh, yes. I heard about them. They're Japanese. Okatsume, yes. Okatsume, a yes. Japanese brand that makes tools and pruners. I heard that they are very exciting and popular for the people in the know. For the people Which, in the course, know. Which, of course, that's us. Yeah, that's us. Right. We know about this stuff. It's our job to know about <laughs> exactly. this stuff. So, and you guys. <laughs> and you guys. So I will, uh, full disclosure, um, I've brought home uh, their hose and their cutting tools, like the... Um, sort of like a scythe for harvesting cabbage and things like that. And I can attest to the quality of their blades, which are very, very well reviewed online. There's a cult following for their blades online um, and their pruners. And from people that I've talked to about the pruners, uh, it's people, they do a really good model for smaller hands. Okay. So, and, and I think when it comes down to it, there's people with big hands and there's people with small hands. <laughs> Those yes. are sort of your two groups. Yes. And then there's people with arthritis and right. we can get to that. And, um, the, that they might need a ratcheting pruner, which we can talk about. Um, but for people who want a quality pruner that's a little better priced than a Falco, but from what I, from everything I've heard and from my ex- direct experience with the blades, probably comparable quality. Uh, check them out, but they're not very well distributed. So th- okay. they might not have it. You may have to order them online, in which case you don't get to try it. Exactly. So yes. that's your kind of catch twenty two. Yes, and they are they apparently aren't as cushioned either. So when you're when you're using them, there's a bit of um, uh, it's a harder cut. Apparently. Yes. Um, but if you're looking for a good quality consumer brand, that I think takes us to Fiskars. Okay. Unless you're ready to dole out the money for Falcos, which you know if you're going to take care of them, have a long time. So Fiskars, right where will Fiskars be in the price range? Premium consumer. I've never seen a professional nursery person. I spent a okay. long time on commercial nurseries. Never seen a commercial <coughs> nursery person using Fiskars, and that's because the plastic doesn't hold up that well, and the mechanism here can get a little gummed up. But they're comfortable. Right. And they've got great quality blades. Okay. Um, another really good, well distributed brand is Corona. Yes. So Corona and Fiskars are sort of of a league with one another. Now, Corona tends to follow Falco's design lead a little more. So if you look, Corona yes. does the Mark's Choice. Now, we bypass. have one of those open there. Yeah, okay, we have one so open. so let's show that. So this is what we're giving away. It looks like a Falco. It feels like a Falco. <laughs> it smells like a Falco. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> it smells like steel and oil. <laughs> yes. Um, but it's a much more attractive price point. So how much does that go for here in Canada? About 30, I think it's $32. $32 in Canada. Oh gosh, for you Americans, that's a bargain. That's a bargain. That's like what? It was about 15 cents US. But sorry no. guys, in the US, I don't think you can order them there. You but can't you can order, order the Corona. Choice, but you can order Corona. And yes. so we when we launched our line of pruners, we did it in partnership with Corona because we agreed with their uh, their standards. Right. So uh, Mark's Choice is a premium gardening brand uh, for home gardeners, not necessarily commercial. 
but people have used them commercial. Uh, so Corona is sort of at that league where it's it's got an aluminum handle, it's got the high carbon blade, and uh, it'll be widely available in the U.S. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so that's your mid-range. Mid-range. Now, did you want to talk about the lowest range? I mean, you mentioned that the, the brand title was called Crap, according to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't want to call anyone out. No. Um, and I think it's really, that's the kind of thing that you get from, from you know, dollar stores, I guess. Or is there brands? I don't even know if there are brands. Uh, I don't. I yeah. mean, I, I always look and I don't recognize the brands. So. And guys, by the way, there will be other brands that we haven't uh, talked about in all yes. different levels. Like, for instance, I know these are loppers. We may talk about them later. So these are bigger. They're Dram. Dram does uh, really beautiful products that are uh, mostly for watering, I think. Yeah, they're mostly um, commercial watering wands. And yet what I love, I don't know if they do hand pruners, Dram. I do. I love this pair of loppers. So a lopper is a two-handed tool that can do thicker branches. Yes. And this is a very nice tool. I like it a lot. I love the fact that it comes in different colors. <laughs> it's a bright blue metallic color. And if you are a fashionable gardener, you're going to go for something like this probably. But I don't know if they do hand tools. So there are other brands. There's What is there the is other? Baco? Um, Baco is big. They're made in France. Okay. And Baco is sort of a funny hybrid between uh, Felco and um, Fisker. They have a plastic handle, so they're lighter feeling, um, but they sort of have a Felco quality and almost Felco um, price point. Very close. Ben and I had a fantastic conversation about where to buy pruning tools, what tools to choose, but the podcast continues. And in the second part of the podcast, we talk about how to maintain those tools once you buy them. You spent good money on your hand pruner or your lopper or your other tools. How do you keep them sharp and clean? And we'll talk about that in the next video. I'll see you then.